Okay, so it's been a really long time since I've done a completely organic unboxing, if I've even ever done a completely organic box unboxing, and that means literally opening the box on camera. This is the new Bravo 5 optic from Sig Sauer, and it is a Bravo 5 because of the five times magnification that it has. So I said to my pals at Optics Planet, hey, I would really be interested in taking a look at that. And so they sent it to me. And here I am taking a look. And I'm going to tell you all about it. So let's cut this little seal. And open her up. It's, it's, like, the, uh, it's like the Romeo box is only bigger. All right, so there's our manual, a lens cloth, which is always nice. I'll put that back in there for the moment. And there is the optic. So to give you some idea of size, there you go. And you can see that we have Picatinny, generous Picatinny, on three sides, top and left and right. So if we want to add yet another unmagnified, perhaps, optic, like a little Romeo, to the top of this, you can do that. There is the initial look at it in the box. It comes with a couple of, uh, looks like, either Allen and or Torx style wrenches. And of course there is our battery. Hopefully it is a 2032. Yes, it is. So it is a... CR2032 battery. That's good because I have tons of those. <laughs> and that should be it. So, nice case. Nice bolded case. I don't know what was supposed to go there. So that's the way it comes in the box, or at least that's the way it came in this box. Looking forward to putting this on a rifle of some sort. Perhaps more than one and get into some testing. Yeah, baby. <laughs> All right, looks like we took the little one out of service. Bang a gong, get it on. Oh, what did I do? Miss with my last shot? All right, let's see if I can ring a little bit of steel at 100 yards with Tula ammo. Having eight different settings for the reticle brightness is nice.
All right. Looks like she's pretty well on. Let me see if I can get that middle one. Nice. Let's try the baby one. That's a challenge. Nice. Let's go back to the easy one. <laughs> that was a nice way to finish the last shot. The only thing that's a little weird is in their specs, Six Hour shows the two different reticle patterns that you would get if you get the 556-762 version versus the 300 blackout version. It shows these two different reticles. You can see them here. However, it occurred to me that when I looked through mine, it's like, wait a minute, mine doesn't look quite like either of those. This is the reticle that's in this site. This is the exact reticle from this site. So while it still kind of has those same graduation increments, it's laid out much differently. I don't necessarily feel one way or another about that, but just something different to point out. Click values are half a minute so 0 0.0 or 0.5 MOA per click and that is for elevation and for windage and again this is the 5x it's also available in a Bravo 3 with a 3x I wouldn't recommend sending it down with the Titanic but it certainly should hold up to all of the elements and wet weather that you might find and if you accidentally drop it in the creek you won't be up the creek it weighs 23 and a half ounces, so there's a little bit of heft here involved, but that's something we expect with an optic of this size and magnification. It has a 30 millimeter aperture, and the entire adjustment range of this, and again, I said it is half MOA per click, the entire range, plus and minus, is 40. So we can go plus 40 and minus 40 from zero. I like the pick rail mount. I like that it's on a little bit of a riser. That is nice. And I definitely like the addition of the pick rail on the optic itself so that if we wanted to add a non-magnified Romeo 1 or something similar to that, we can easily do that. Let's see if I have any luck with the uh, Bravo 5 on the Tavor 7. See if we can ring steel at 100 yards with this one. Where am I? There we go. Got a hold a little bit low. The reticle and the graduation marks are super clear. Eye relief is nice. This is a great medium distance optic.
Uh, let me try my luck on that medium one. So I've been running this Bravo 5 now for about a solid month, and I've run it on three different rifles. I didn't use it on any 5.56 platform, although it is obviously well suited for that as well. So after putting hundreds of rounds down range at lots of different distances with lots of different rifles and lots of different ammo and all that, I like this optic a lot. I already had some red dot optics that were very good quality and not magnified that I like to use. And obviously I have scopes that are highly magnified. But what I didn't have was something that sits in the middle, something in that sweet spot that even though I might be able to dial back some of the scopes to just four or five power, they're still very big and bulky and you don't necessarily want all that. And even most good scopes aren't going to give you that quick acquisition type of reticle. So for me, where this Bravo 5 really shines is in that 50 to 100 yard range. Out to 200 would be no problem. Anything inside 25 might start to be a little bit too magnified. But again, 50 to 100 is really the sweet area for this optic. So that mid-range is perfect. The five times magnification gives you a really good picture of your target. The field of view is very wide. The eye relief is very good and I just found it to be so bright to bring this up to my eye and be able to see the entire field with my target nicely magnified. So let me try and describe the things that I like the most about it and maybe the one or two things that I don't like as much. First and foremost um, the weight is not bad. When you consider the size of this thing, I mean, you can just see it here in my hand, and you can see that it's got a little bit of bulk to it. And for that amount of bulk, and for the amount of glass that it has in it, it really isn't that bad. I like that it takes a CR2032 battery. That goes in right here behind this SIG logo on the, that little knob. So I like the, the compatibility with a lot of other optics that use that same type of battery. One of my favorite features is something that we all hope we don't need to take advantage of, but that is this protection right here that's going to help protect our knobs. And this Picatinny rail, which is abundant on top and two sides, also helps to protect our adjustment turrets. So it's very sturdy in that respect. You could drop this thing, and if you don't break the glass or knock things out of alignment, you're probably not going to break your turrets either or even bump them out of adjustment. I like that it has a full two diopter adjustment back here for the shooter's eye. That was nice to be able to give me a nice crisp reticle just where I needed it. I like the way it goes from zero to full bright with just one turn. And I like the way it goes from zero to lowest night vision setting with a full turn with just one turn. That was pretty well thought out, I think. So if you've got this sight turned off and you need to bring it up quickly in daylight, you're just one turn away from a full bright reticle. And if you needed to dial down, you can do so from there. But initially, for quick acquisition, you're going to want full bright. Conversely, if you're using night vision, you're not going to want it to be very bright. You're not even going to necessarily want it to be the brightest night vision setting. You don't want to blow your, your actual night vision. So... One turn this way gives you the lowest night vision setting. And then if you have to go higher, you have two more adjustments from there. So a little bit of thought went into that. And that is a very nice, very intuitive adjustment knob. Now that brings me to one of the things that I think could be a problem. 
if you're not careful you might start to unscrew this cap which is the battery housing cap while you're playing with this knob six hour has put high quality glass in the back and very high quality glass in the front and that is probably one of the key things about this optic that I really like it gives me that beautiful bright field of view that was a joy to look at through this optic and that is the heart and soul of course of any optical device is what kind of lenses do we have what kind of quality glass I like the built-in riser I know risers are a little you know kind of a love them or hate them type of thing with some people but this one worked good because I was able to put this on a rifle or a couple of different rifles that had flip up sights and I was able to get it right over the flip up sight without interfering and that was nice I did not have to remove anything to be able to put this on I also find that the height of this is pretty well calculated for probably the average shooters eye because when I put my cheek down where my cheek wanted to be comfortable on the stock my eye was right where it needed to be for this optic getting it on is easy it's a quick on quick off with half inch knobs the only other sort of minor complaint that I have and this is really being nitpicky now the slot for the adjustments on both adjustment turrets are is very wide you know like you need you need like your auto mechanics screwdriver instead of the ones that you probably if you're like me keeping your range bag so I did find um, one of my fix it sticks blades was just about the right size to work okay but there was still some slop that would be nicer if it was maybe a little narrower slot it's hard to really feel your adjustment really well when you're when you have a lot of slop so there it is there's my first look at the Sig Sauer Bravo 5 rifle sight one that I think is a very excellent option for mid-range work I think this one is just about perfect for that mid-range area especially on your AR pattern or similar battle rifle type gun I had absolutely no problem hitting steel at 100 yards all day long even down to 3 inch steel plates on both the Tavor 7 and the St. Victor. 